Yes, please. Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, May 22nd, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Aim for the eyes. <laughs> always works. And our guests today are Dread Pirate Higgs. Welcome from Canada. Ahoy. And George Brown from East Tennessee. Hi. And Boudreaux, Ohio. Was that right? Kentucky. 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 Close. Only a state away. <laughs> a digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show from I'm about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. In Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us. And we'll tell you more about that after the mid-show break. Wombat, what's our topic today? Does atheism need a pope? And all the repercussions that come with it. You think it's an easy answer. You think it is, but let's we'll go into the meat and potatoes of it. Before before we do, before we touch any of those proteins, let's have a nice dose of carbs from our own uh, noodly uh, rep- representative in chief, who will lead us in our weekly invocation. Go ahead. Our noodly lord, who art in a colander, al dante be thy noodles, thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread and forgive us our cussing as we forgive those who cuss against us. Mm. Lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs for thine are the meatballs and the sauces and the grog whenever and ever. So, you know, something I've been uh, looking forward to is seeing all of you guys here. Uh, I got my mom here, and it's nice to have friends and family over at the same time, too. And so I'd love to just take a moment to just catch up with everybody. Dred, I heard you're doing a lot of weddings. What's going on with you? Yeah, well, you know, now that uh, the COVID uh, restrictions have lightened up, uh, mm. people are uh, getting themselves married. And, uh, you know, right now I'm not, of course, I'm a marriage commissioner under the biostatistics ministry. So, um, if people, uh, it's a good secular option. And nice. a lot of people, a lot of people don't know that there's that option. Um, so sometimes they come to me and say, well, you know, what are you like non-denominational? And I say, well, in fact, uh, under the regulation, I cannot invoke any kind of supernatural being. So, this Good. is a purely secular option. And they, you know, once they kind of realize it and they, they aren't religious, then they're quite happy uh, to have that option. So for anyone listening, um, Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster reps and priests can do wedding officiating. And it doesn't mean that everyone has to eat spaghetti afterwards, right? Like, it's not like a spaghetti themed wedding, though you totally could have that. <laughs> what it is, is like a respectful, non-supernatural place or representative to hold vows right and still be officiating is it is that yeah. close well so i am actually i've been appointed by the ministry of vital statistics to be a marriage commissioner so it has mm-hmm. nothing to do with pastafarianism if people choose the pastafarian option because i in my photo online through the ministry if someone looks for a marriage commissioner they see me wearing a tricorn and sure uh, so if they want that option I am happy to oblige. Mm. Um, absolutely. And yeah. I have. That might be the um, circle I check. <laughs> <laughs> just letting you know. Yeah. No, uh, the one I had in uh, just around Christmas uh, a year ago. Yeah. Uh, yes, I had my uh, tricorn. I was uh, in a sweater that had lights on it with the reindeer, you know, one of those really ugly sweaters. Sure. And, mm-hmm. and a pair of plaid, uh, uh, plaid um, pajamas. And, uh, and we had a lot of fun. I we imagine fun. that's the way yeah. that's the way weddings should be in my head. They should be a yeah. lot of fun and a memorable experience and, and fun for everybody. It's not fun sitting yeah. in a suit, sweating outside, listening to the same three songs over and over again. Mm-hmm. And right. it's just like, oh, okay. which is which is where I'll be today. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else going on that you want to catch us up on? 
Uh, just doing more wood turning out in the shop and uh, nice. just waiting to get back to work here. Uh, there's been a slump in the uh, film thing because we had pilot season. Sure. So they have to wait until those are produced and have been aired in order to determine whether the series is going to continue. So okay. starting okay. up in June is when uh, the regular seasons begin and you know, I'll be back at work. So nice, nice, yeah. nice, nice. Boudreaux, it's always good to see you. Welcome back to the show. How you been? I've been I've been great. I've, I've been sad. I've missed so many guys. Soccer has been busy and yeah. Um, but uh, it's it's great to be back. And and I'm going to Greece next month. Oh, All right. very, about? very nice. Yeah, we're about uh, at Athens. The oh, okay. OG. Nice. OG. Yeah. If you're going to go to Greece, you got to go to Athens. Right. And then while well, I mean, Macedonia, too, like there's so many beautiful places there. And I guess, is it like just sightseeing or do you have family up there? Uh, no, well, I'm going for a conference, uh, submitted a paper to a conference and I'm going to go present. Um, but uh, my wife's coming with and a coworker and his spouse and uh, one of my colleagues is from Greece and he'll be there. So I will get kind of the inside. Track. What's, so how, the paper, what's the paper on? Yeah. And how is your group? <laughs> by the way uh non-existent uh, i did i did take latin in college so maybe yeah. that'll uh, <laughs> well basically uh, you, you're an engineer right like you should be able to do the math right like because all the variables right. and all the all, all, they all came from yeah. there it's just like yeah, oh math you is spell a universal these? language yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh you spell uh, with math i understand everything you're saying now that's great uh, um, and the paper topic is too boring for this podcast uh, what's the Fred? title of the the topic just hit us oh, just I've, hit us cold cold dipping in the shower just give us a title i'm not even sure exactly the effect of segmentation on safety okay it's not a, bad not yeah. bad not bad not yeah. bad not bad i love it oh what <laughs> <laughs> anyway um george brown second and a half didn't see you last week we're gonna call you what's up how you been Oh, I've been okay. I, um, uh, you know, here in Tennessee, things are growing. Yes. It's, uh, it's springtime and, um, everybody's allergies are acting up, which means my allergies have been acting up. So very true. I started taking, I started taking a new antihistamine that's been making me very drowsy. And I also was up very late uh, the night before last show. So I decided I'm just going to sleep in today. Yeah. Is what happened last week. That's why I wasn't here. Painting oh, the town red. Was, you see, George yeah, is trying just, to make us not feel bad. By well, saying, better than you being just, ill or something. That's great. Very true. No, no, I was just sleeping to tell you the truth. I okay. will not lie. I did not chop down a cherry tree. I was fast asleep. <laughs> so a very popular bush here in Tennessee is the honeysuckle. I don't know how much if it's very popular in Kentucky, but they're all in bloom statewide. So you go yes. outside and mm -hmm. everything smells sweet, but it's also like hits your face and you're sneezing, but then you get over it and you have this <clears> like, it's nature's been shampoo washed kind of sense outside. It's very, very nice. Uh, well, I, uh, growing, oh. up in, growing up in New York, I always had a post-nasal drip. And uh, it was driving me crazy. And the reason for that was all the pollution blowing over from New Jersey, from all the chemical factories over oh, there. Yeah. So here in Tennessee, it's different. I have the same symptoms, and it's from all this junk that's growing. All right. I'm going to ask this weird question. Has anyone ever seen those weird pots that you put down one nostril that pours out the second nostril? Yes. Or is that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is that I just have a southern one. thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. All right. I yes, didn't know. I, I have a squeeze bottle that does the same thing. All right. All right. I saw that and I thought it was a magic trick. I was like, there's no way these two no, no. are connected. That's crazy. Are you, is it go, where's it going? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> anyway. No, they're good. They're good. They're good. They work. Yeah. They work. Yeah, they work. I had, I right. had sinus yeah. uh, surgery and I had to do that for a week or two. Yeah. And the very first time I did it, I, was, I thought it was so weird. It felt like I'd, like you feel when you go to a pool and get water in your nose. Yeah, but after that, I mean, there was no chlorine, so it didn't hurt. Okay. It, after that, it was just fine. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. Just a gentle saline solution. Mm -hmm. And and here's the, I guess, the scary question: Does a lot of stuff come out, or is it just like oh, I'm just rinsing? I'm just rinsing for rinsing, or it's like, whoa, <laughs> you, that was in my you, head you the got, whole time. You've got the sink water running too, right? Yeah. So, oh, okay. You don't you don't need to look at that. Stuff. You don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> 
better like, out than in, I always say. <laughs> okay. That's right. Better out than in. Found that USB stick. I was I was wondering where it went. There's where all the spiders are crawling by now. Right. Yeah, the toy soldiers. I've been. Yeah, out. yeah, like things from yeah. childhood. You're like, that's where that thing went. All right, jelly beans. You know what? It's I. I have said this. Like my migraine's I, gone. Right, right, right. If I <laughs> if I'm cleaning my car and I find like a jelly bean under the car seat, I'm still eating the jelly bean. That's how. That's like my food rule because there's nothing else touching that, and it's already a jelly bean. Like it's not like that's a right. piece of. Reese's Pizza Cups was like melted. Like I'm eating that still. I love yeah. it. Anyway, no, that's Larry, yeah, yeah. I think we're all, I think we all agree that's normal. Okay. We need more women on the show. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Larry. Absolutely. Larry, yep. how you been? How you been? How you been? Oh, I'm fine. Uh, I meant to take my bike out yesterday and didn't get around to it. So I'm hoping I will today. My motorcycle, that is. Ooh, but no, I'm feeling fine. Doing good for 72. Had a birthday this month. Yes. So uh, oh. happy birthday, Larry. Thanks. Happy birthday. Yeah. Listen, Larry, no, when, it's you all good. Your, when you ride your motorcycle, do you go out with your suspenders? Because there's nothing more cooler than just like <laughs> bicycle helmet. That's and right. If people look uh, back, right. like, I, snap, I snap. represent, as it yeah. were. Yeah. <laughs> just going Actually, back it kind of remind me of uh, red green a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Keep your stick on the ice. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up with that. That's wonderful. Yeah. Guys, we have an interesting topic, an interesting question today, which is, does atheism need a pope? Now, hear me out. What does a pope do? Okay, you might, your knee jerk reaction is no, atheism doesn't need a pope because we don't need the pope. It's like, I understand what you're saying, but think about what the benefits of a pope is. When you think of the Catholic Church, you don't have to think about the, the disconnected groups of people across the entire world. You don't have to think about an organization that's been around since medieval times. You think about one guy who lives in one place, who visits different locations, talks to presidents, talks to other world leaders, gives speeches as a representative of this entire ideology, and who everyone looks up to as like, that's the guy who represents the rules and hands down the dictates that we all represent, follow, and we have an election system for this person, and that's the person who represents us. And if you have questions, talk to that guy. And meanwhile, I'm going to live my life and if you have any questions, feel free to talk to a representative. And I feel like while not entirely, uh, while it does have its own complications, I do feel like there could be benefits, particularly from a political side, to having a representative of atheism. Because for the most part, we can ignore atheists, but it's very hard to ignore the Pope. You know, Those shoes are incredible. What are you going to do? And he has a little bulletproof case, little tiny- Will, it, will he have a funny hat? Right of course, there's going to be a funny hat. You can't have a religion without a funny hat. We all know that's we all know. Well, atheism is not a religion. <laughs> I'm just saying, pick and choose, pick and choose, pick and choose. So, well, around someone circle, did point out say? that uh, we already have one, and that de facto pope is uh, Richard Dawkins. Richard Dawkins, yeah. Interesting, interesting. Mm -hmm. De facto pope is Richard Dawkins. Dred Pryor, would you like to elaborate, or what do you think? Oh well, I mean. You know, because, of course, he was considered one of the four horsemen, along with uh, Sam Harris, Daniel Dennett and uh, Christopher Hitchens. Mm. Um, and um, I think uh, Richard Dawkins is, is pretty strident in his atheism um, and a very soft spoken, but still soft spoken. You know, he's, he's um, you know, he, he, he's eloquent, uh, articulate. Uh, absolutely, uh, incredibly knowledgeable and qualified, um, but, you know, soft-spoken and, uh, and sort of gentle in certain respects. And I think those are uh, all good qualities of someone that's representing. Ah, oh, there you go. Aw, well, that's why he signed there. <laughs> he signed it? Yeah. Cool. Very, cool. Very, Very good. Cool. cool. Uh, that's, well, that's, that's, is that your brush with uh, fame there? Yeah, I got to talk to him and, and nice. it's on real quickly, real briefly. But yeah. Nice. What about uh, the idea of political persuasion? Because I know Richard Dawkins doesn't necessarily like shake hands with the, the, the king of Bolivia, you know, or like uh, any American presidents, because people will be like, I don't want to talk. I don't want I don't want to be associated with the guy who's in charge of atheism. Like, who can, how can you bridge that gap? And do you think Richard Dawkins is in a good position to do that? Or would you? without a name necessary, would you want like a separate figure to be sort of like the political in-between of atheism and, you know, politics at large? 
Mm. Yeah, that's that's an interesting question. Well, it's kind of like asking, should we have an atheist party? Mm. There you go. You know, political party. And the answer to that is hell yeah. But I mean, can <laughs> we get away? Can we get away uh, from the two party system enough to do that? And that's sure. that's the problem. Um, I mean, right now, the nuns, uh, I think, outnumber the religiously affiliated. Right. But uh, atheism, per se, is only about 10 percent. You know, people right. that actually say I'm an atheist, Correct. Uh, <laughs> although a lot more people than that don't believe in gods. <clears throat> as far as an, your question about the atheist pope, um, I'm not so sure, because like the word God, pope brings an awful lot of bad baggage with it. Uh, he's an authoritarian figure. Right. Uh, at the head of an authoritarian uh, regime or uh, hierarchical. establishment hierarchical exactly yeah. and uh, you An are empire, expected basically. to follow the edicts of a pope uh, and atheists won't do that <laughs> i mean we're critical thinkers we're independent people it's like herding cats as so many people say it's, so uh, Larry, i don't that think was we a can... phrase i was hoping you'd say this show because that that is what you say it's, <laughs> yeah, atheism yeah. is like herding a bunch of cats Right. And, and I, yeah, uh, I, I don't think it would work, but it's good to have a, 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 a public uh, person to be able to answer questions about that, who is very good at it. Dread and then Boudreaux. Yeah, I, I was going to ask if you guys have heard the term brights as, yeah. uh, as something that relates mm -hmm. to uh, atheists. Uh, Daniel Dennett uses it a lot in his uh, books. I'm reading one of his books uh, actually called Breaking the Spell. Um, and he uses the word uh, brights regularly to refer to people who are um, atheists. So, yeah, I, I, I think it's a, it's a better name for you know a political party than atheist party. Like I it's see part of the brights, you know, like like a rebranding. That's pretty cool. Yeah. A rebranding without the baggage. It's almost as good as being a pastafarian. <laughs> Well, the only criticism I've heard of, of using the Brights as a name is it implies everybody else is dim. Well, so. that, and the shoe I, fits. You know what? I'm going <laughs> to stick that knife a little deep, deeper. It also implies that all atheists are bright, which is not the case. <laughs> uh, there's that too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, so there's yeah. a little bit. I always, you know, I'm always a little weirded out when people find identifier terms that in their own right are just self compliments. And it's like critical thinking. Yes. Like that's hard to do, but like, I consider myself an intellectual. It's like, okay, what does that mean? Well, I watch Netflix with the subtitles on. It's just like, oh, okay. 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 We may have a little bit to go. Yeah. Boudreau, go for it. And then we go to George. What's up, Boudreau? Yeah. I liked your, your point earlier uh, about cherry picking. I mean, if we're, if we're talking about, you know, uh, entertaining this, this idea, uh, we don't have to, you know, follow it exactly the way that the, the Catholic Church does. We can cherry pick exactly, and and I think you can take take the good pieces. And I, I've made the point, I think, on this show before that that's one of one of the struggles we have, uh, you know, as a group is that we we really are so separated and we're so unique and different that we can't rally under one term. Um, there are a lot of people that don't like the term atheist, but probably believe. As strongly as we do on most other aspects, especially political things, you know. Uh, so, yeah, having having someone to kind of rally behind, and I don't, I, Dawkins probably wouldn't be the perfect choice because I think he he, he scares off some people. Um, but yeah, having someone that the, the group kind of elects to yeah. kind of rally and, behind. And yeah. Hitchens is no longer available. I mean, he would have yeah. been a perfect, uh, it, uh, very eloquent, very uh, yeah. very atheist, uh, and yeah. uh, and willing to. Uh, speak up about it in a public forum and do it and well funny too and funny yeah yeah and you know if i were going to pick and choose personally for me uh how i would pick and choose would be maybe and not to get into too much of a tangent but i would try to get opportunities for more diverse representation of atheism to show that there's a lot more than just the the you know, very very nice strong intelligent white men and I would have like Mendisa Thomas up there. I'd have black comedians because a lot of black comedians are atheists as well. Hannibal Buress is a great one. Richard Pryor was a great one. I know we can't use Richard Pryor because he's died, but we can use Hannibal Buress. We could have like intellectuals. Uh, we could have like, I was happy to even be representative of it. Just like, just to showcase that it's okay if you're black to come out 
as an atheist, because there is pressure in our community to, to stay religious, particularly in America. And it's nice to show that not only can you be successful, but you can also come out as well. What do you think, Larry? Oh, yeah, like Ayan Hirsi Ali would be a good representative. Absolutely. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, uh, I just Ayan, I imagine... Ayan Hirsi Ali, she's a, a Black woman from uh, Somalia. Mm. Is that where she's from? And uh, she's written a couple of books about how she escaped Islam uh, and oh, a, yeah, yeah. Forced, a forced marriage. Right. Uh, she went through Germany into uh, Holland. Uh, went I to college to a there podcast with her uh, and Michael Shermer yeah, and uh, ended up in the pop parliament there and um, she passed a lot of reforms and then eventually ended up in, in America in California I think um, but yeah she's got a couple of great books out there and I really recommend reading Heretic I think is is the one right the first one that she wrote also, there's a whole history of Black playwrights, men and women, and it goes from James Baldwin, W.B. Du Bois. There's like great literature and in, in, in inclusions into American history that were written by Black atheists who are, <clears throat> who are prominent about it, who put it into their plays. And I found like if, we, if there was more than just a couple of names that we kept using, it would seem more of like a fuller on, you know, force of critical thinking and intellectuals that's like open for everybody. If we could do something like the Pope system, I would say, why not have multiple Popes? And why not empower everybody to be a Pope in their own right, in their own communities? Mm. And to yeah, show we could that have everyone national has that Popes ability. and state Popes and I regional and city Popes. And city Popes, it was like, hey, I'm the block Pope. I'm the Pope of this block, what's up? Yeah, I'm anyway. the hood Pope. <laughs> I'm the hood Pope, we need that. We need an atheist hood Pope. And it'd be the best thing ever, because it'd be like, these guys are in the hood. It's like, yeah, but that's a hood Pope. It's like, oh, that guy, yeah. he's smoking with like uh, yeah. one of those he's weird cool. things. He's cool, he's cool. Yeah, hang out with that guy. Anyway, George Brown, second and a half. Sorry. Uh, Sorry. I just I just wanted to mention something that I noticed in the news last week. Um, uh, Nancy Pelosi was denied. Um, she was told she couldn't attend mass or something by the uh, what the Archbishop of San Francisco. I don't know what these people's titles are or mean. And meanwhile, the Pope said that. Biden could attend mass after all. And of course, what he's what these guys are talking about is is that these people's stance on birth control. Uh, mm. So so one one the the top guy in the Catholic Church is saying to um, to everybody that that uh, the president of the United States being a Catholic is okay if he attends mass. But the Archbishop of San Francisco is saying that Nancy Pelosi can't attend mass because she's opposed to abortions too. So they're disagreeing with each other. Maybe we need bishops as well as as a pope in Maybe. in our Church of Atheism. You know, I do like I I I, I mean, we can go back and forth on this, but uh, uh, Dred, what do you think? I want to get everyone's thoughts in here. Well, I was going to say uh, that as a representative of Pastafarianism, we have what is called the International Pastafarian Captains Conclave. Ooh. And so the various captains of churches around the world um, essentially get together to discuss matters that are of interest to Pastafarians of the world over. And so no one, of course, I mean, it's, it's like, true um the true de democracy that was part of uh, the the charter for for pirate ships um is that things are run by consensus uh right. and you know liberty true freedom is what's most important for all pirates and and in the interests of each other uh it's in their own interest to mm. to make sure that they stick to it so that's and that's the way we run and the bedrock of empathy is compromising to an extent and realizing, hey, you can't always be the way you want. And sometimes the way you want it may not even be the best way for everybody. And like I understanding that benefits everyone. And I find like a true democracy system could help like a, a enclave of atheist popes from both the blocks all the way to like country levels, just like congregating and saying, hey, everyone else is invited too, but this is what we want to represent ourselves as. Is, mm -hmm. And do we like the term rights? Do we want to try something different? We want to use all of it. Hey, maybe it works for everybody. Why are we following strict rules? Like we, we just want to make sure that we pull people away from bad critical thinking pathways and hopefully 
migrate our society towards, you know, this deeper, slower thinking style that can ultimately benefit everyone because it's clearly showing some technological benefits as well. Yeah. And the supernatural no, thing trying. Yeah, we can hear you, Sky. Yeah, go hey, ahead, Sky. Sky. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, I just wanted to make sure I was logged in. Yeah, yeah. we're going to take, we, we're gonna take we a break here in a minute. Uh, do you have anything to say on the subject before we go? Not right now. Okay. Okay. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. But yeah, atheism and popes, there might be a room for more visible leadership is what I'm saying. And I think we can benefit a lot from that. Um, oh, yeah. Especially those there in Congress, we, if they would become more visible, more vocal, that would help <laughs> right. a lot. Well, we had, we had once Madeline Murray O'Hare, but she was awfully abrasive. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I, there's, there's, I was just going to say that... Uh, I, I believe that in America, as far as I remember, um, that atheists were actually the most hated group, right? Uh, or are. Um, I don't know if things are starting to change as uh, the, with the rise of the nuns, but um, it certainly has been that, you know, that in the past. And and polls taken of voters, uh, you know, where an atheist is an option, um, people are. You know, again, they, they just treat, they say uh, an atheist will never, ever get in as a president. You can have a black president, you can have a, a Chinese president, you can have a woman president, but they better believe in something because atheists, you're hated. Sure. Scott. They're in Texas. What is this nun's business? What is this nun's business? We'll um, get to it in a second. Sky, what do you think? Uh, I was going to throw in that. Uh... Here in Texas and in six other states, the state constitution prohibits an atheist from holding any public That's office or right. growth. Yes, yes. I think that's very cool. The, no okay, although, although, that is, although that is in the constitution, it's no longer protected. I mean, there have passed many amendments since then and it overrode. The that statement and the constitution, so it's it's not enforceable anymore. But since it's an originating document, they can't literally go in and change it. It right. would then change they can't take it out. the constitution the way it was then, and we want to pre preserve that for history. If Just anything, I think it's a good idea. If anything, it's a time capsule for how dated we were in our thinking and how sure. much progress we've made up to that point. Right, and these constitutions. And if the fact that we can amend a constitution is a demonstration that old dogmas or even thousands of years old should be right. changed and, and moved past since. Right. Anyway, Larry, we're at a break, I think. Yeah, we are. Stay tuned right here for the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. We're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. Listen. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Now let's take a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 20th year now, and we have over 1,000 members, and we have weekly in-person meetings in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables or outside on the deck if the weather is pretty. We're usually the loudest and happiest group there. We also have two, well, I didn't say which night it was. It was Tuesday nights at uh, 5.30 or 6, and we usually go to about 8. We also have Tuesday evening Zoom meetings. If you'd like to join us, uh, if you don't live in Knoxville or don't want to get out, uh, just join us on our Zoom meeting. Uh, email us, first of all, at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com and we'll send you the link so you can join us. Uh, you can also find ASK online at Facebook, meetup.com or go to their website at knoxvilleatheist.org. Uh, you can just Google Knoxville Atheist to find it. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one. Start one. Well, Matt, where do you want to pick up? <clears throat> Holy mackerel, Batman. We said words in the first half that we're going to clarify <laughs> in the second half. So more of an extension. Guys, I also have a Mia Coppola. I forgot to add the episode from last week up online. And so there's no listener comments. 
I'm going to upload both of them this week. So expect some comments uh, uh, next week. Uh, sorry about that, guys. And feel free to leave a comment in the uh, YouTube description or comment box below. We'll go over them in the next week's show around this section. Anyway, Dread Pirate, you said we're speaking of Catholics. We're talking about the, uh, the Pope. We had a conversation about nuns rising. What's going on? Where are all these nuns coming from? <laughs> so nun is a term for no religious affiliation so oh, or uh, none of the above or none of the above yeah so if it's if it says check which religion you're a member of usually down at the bottom is none of the above and so that's where the term nuns comes from you have exactly. to point out the tie into richard Pryor, though right brewster's millions uh he he ran for uh, uh office and he convinced everyone to go vote none of the above oh yeah? <laughs> no, I, that was a while ago. <laughs> a long time since I saw that movie. I saw that movie too. So, but yeah. it was a while before it was for me too. But yeah, that's great. That's basically the whole idea behind nuns. And so mm -hmm. we have a census. I didn't know if it was in Canada as well, but uh, in America, yeah. you have to fill out a census to describe who you are and where you're from. It's a it's a duty obligation of our citizens to be able to do this, and they will track you down if you don't. But when you do, you have the option of describing what your religious affiliation is. And like Dread Pirate just said, at the very bottom of that list, you have the, the in my opinion, the, the best box to check, which is, you know, none. And if you hit that, it, a little question mark pops up because we're beginning to see that group exponentially rise compared to all other groups which are declining. So like the Christians in the most generic sense are decreasing in America. And nuns are rising. And in fact, it wasn't until like a couple of years ago where nuns are actually the leading majority mm -hmm. position. Majority in America. In America. Mm -hmm. Over 50%, over 53% yeah. or something over like 50, that since yeah, the last poll. Yeah. And that's, that's an impressive thing because mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like that's the way it is when you look out a window or when you go outside. Yet you have to think one out of two people that you're meeting would have checked that box as part of their survey. It's a very bizarre uh -huh. concept. Yeah. That, that was one thing that uh, I was troubled with in, um, well, one thing I did when the census came around my way, I had the full the full form, which mm. is the extended version. Um, and that, uh, that question was asked. And instead of signing off on none of the above, I actually wrote in another box and Pastafarianism uh, beside it, and then checked myself off as a Pastafarian. Nice. But, uh, you know, knowing that these uh, statistics are changing as they are, and I think I brought this up the last time I was on, was about the uh, subsidized child care seats available in British Columbia and how uh, there's like 21% uh, Christians uh, from the last census. Um, but 58% of the subsidized seats were for Christian uh, child care schools with Christian programming. And that's of course, you know, church and state mixing uh, unfairly as usual um, to uh, to wait where the public funds go. So, you know, as a pastafarian, as uh, other nuns who are now, like you say, on the rise, the majority are funding, you know, the majority of seats in Christian uh, child care uh, centers. And it's just not right. Mm, very true. Boudreaux, listen. The idea that nuns are rising, I, I, I don't know if it's just on your block or if it, in your household, I imagine most people are atheists, but you have people coming into your home. Do you feel like in your neck of the woods in, in, in Lexington, do you feel like it is, how do I put this, relatively nun uh, populated? Or is there still like, would you, would you confidently say, it's, I don't think it's one out of two people here, or maybe you just haven't asked. Feel free to jump in i'll yeah. just keep extending my question yeah. longer and longer no no that, that's interesting i'm i mean we're we're in kentucky so we are i think kind of part of the bible belt uh hmm. at least a, a little bit we're a red state too which i think you know definitely plays into this um but what, I mean, we're in one of the bigger cities or in lexington so um I, it, it kind of depends you know if i'm if i'm going to uh, uh soccer a game in, in, in a smaller town nearby. Uh, most of the parents are from that small town. Uh, I'm, I'm probably the only atheist on the, you know, uh, in, in the, in the group. Um, when I go to work, uh, my office suite, um, I think there's actually one religious person, uh, you know, nearby. Right. Uh, it, so it, it, it depends. Um, mm. uh, it, 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 I think, you know, my street, 
you know, I, I can I can probably count on one hand the number of atheists I suspect. Um, and you know, this is you know, I know people go to church, or I know, um, you know, they're so. Yeah, I think context man- matters, but yes, um, yeah, that's that's tough tough one to ask. Actually, one of the things I found interesting driving around uh, our our Kentucky license plate, you have an option for "In God We Trust," right? <laughs> um, which I, I think you it's not the default, luckily. Um, sure. Sure. Unlike unlike police cars in Georgia or something like that. Um, but but I've been noticed that anytime I see a lot of times when I see the in God we trust, I look down at the county and it's usually a, a, a more rural county. Mm. Um, I, I've been I've been kind of doing, you know, uh, back of the napkin calculations thinking it's anytime it's my county, Fayette County. I, I usually don't see it. But anytime I see uh, I see the in God we trust, I look down and it's some rural county. Yeah. So Anecdotal. That is- I'm not sure if you guys are aware of that, but there's a weird litmus test when you get a driver's license in Tennessee or Kentucky where they ask if you believe in a God and want to represent that as part of the signing up for a car registration. And if you say yes, you get a in God we trust on your license plate, your government issued license plate that you put Uh, on the back or front of your car. And you have to you have to say no to get the other one so that you can get the secular version on your car. And it's like this weird, awkward thing. It's a very bizarre thing where you're in front of everybody and the lady's looking at you. And I, here's here's a small victory. Here's a small victory. Just like, I can't believe this. Like, welcome to America. I can't, I'll be right back. <laughs> I'll be right back. In Tennessee, they've redesigned the license plate. So like now there is a new issue of license plates that are a completely different color and there's only one option and it has no God on it whatsoever. So like- it's in Tennessee. It's in Tennessee. Have you seen the new blue license plates, Larry? Yeah, but you do yeah. have an option yeah. for it. God we trust on it. But you, but now you have to ask for that. So it's been flipped around. Oh, so like, okay. So now cool. it's not no to get the non-religious one. Now it's you're getting this one. Would you like a religious one? Would you like one for autism? Would you like one that for this? Now you have to go out of your way to pick that one. So like the default has swapped, and I appreciate that. Uh, Sky, are you mm-hmm. calling from Tennessee or Kentucky? San Antonio, Texas. San Antonio, is do you have any weird license plate things that you want to bring up? Uh, no, what we have that's weird is we have an in God we trust law for the schools, which I am very much against. Mm. The schools have to post in God we trust in prominent letters. Um some schools, it's only at the entrance. Uh, some schools, like public universities, uh, it has to be in every building. Okay. Wow. That's, so, that's cool. I think we I think we have the same thing here in Tennessee. Mm. Yeah, you do. Mm. I've got a list somewhere. I was I was going to brag on our our superintendent for our public school system in in Kentucky. Uh, we had that we had that rule too. Um, and uh, he put a dollar bill in all the public schools uh, 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 near the front because it has in God we trust on the dollar bill. And so it's an enlar- slightly enlarged dollar bill, but it, I thought it was a pretty clever way of getting around it. I mean, sure. what, a crazy thing. Thing. what a crazy yeah. thing. I think, uh, I think God appearing on the money was one of the worst decisions ever because it galvanized in American thought the connection between capitalism and religion. Right. Yeah. I would much rather see our real motto, E Pluribus Unum, there. Right. You which know, the now is relegated to the back. And the, and the most bizarre, I oh, love cool. that dredging <laughs> uh, Pasifarian thing. It's yeah. one of the things where the more Christians try to push religion into the public circle, the more they do it in the least Christian way possible. Because you can of think course, of the yeah. last thing God or Jesus would want his name to be on would be on the thing that we throw at strippers. Has anyone ever connected, like, <laughs> at least put it on the $20 bill? <laughs> <laughs> That's clever. But do you know what $1 bills are for? Uh, just you put them underneath the $20 bill to make it look like you got even more money. Like that's, everyone knows that. Okay, anyway. Uh, I do have this question for kids, guys who have kids. Um, if your kid didn't want to say the Pledge of Allegiance, and this is an older comment question that we had that I wanted to bring up again. So um, sorry for the person who asked it. I forgot their name, but it was an important thing. Like if 
for atheists who have kids, their kid comes home and it's like, hey, I got in trouble for not doing the Pledge of Allegiance. How would you react to that? And would that be an issue if they can explain why they didn't feel like they had to compel themselves to say a thing to a flag? Um, Dred, I know you have kids. Uh, Larry, you too. George, I think everyone here is kids. No, I don't. Kind of well, I have, a, I have a stepdaughter. Okay. So Dred. Yeah, but what, she was an adult when I, when I got married. So she got to shoot. So she came back from school being like, they didn't want to let me say the pledge of allegiance. You would have other questions for her. And they're like, well, I you're really do school. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dred, you, you're from Canada. I'm not sure if right. they have such a thing. No, but we do, of course, have uh, our anthem. Okay. And uh, one of the lines is, uh, God keep our land glorious and free. Mm. Um, so I say, Quab, Quab keep our land glorious and free. Okay. 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 Uh, so, uh, Larry, what do you think? Well, first of all, uh, nobody should be uh, compelled to take any kind of oath. Mm. If, if it's under duress, an oath is invalid. Right. I mean, simple and clear. You right. should not be forced to make an oath. Right. Period. So we're not. Any kind. So the, t the superintendent comes up like, we're not putting her in trouble for not saying the oath because that would be the case. Right. We're getting her in trouble because she doesn't want to say the oath. It's just like, that's so terrible. Pick a different school. <laughs> it's right. the same thing at right. the end of the day. Absolutely. Who's have you ever had, what would you do in that kind of reaction if um, your kids came in and were like, hey, we stayed quiet during the Pledge of Allegiance and now we're in trouble? And yeah, I would, I would uh, back them up on it. I, I think, uh, um, I mean, that's like forcing someone to, to pray before a meal. It's, mm -hmm. um, I, I, will, I will point out um, that my daughter says the Pledge of Allegiance and then skips the, um, the God bit, you know, because okay. that's in there too. But she just, she skips that part pur purposefully. Um, so like so. the whole speech goes through and then for some reason your daughter ends like five seconds earlier than everybody else, but screams it out just as loud. And it was like, Hey, she hit the part. It's like, yeah, that's right. Remember me. Remember me. Yeah. Nice. I love it. Dread. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, um, um, that, uh, um, I, I would agree, you know, as in terms of the pledge of the legions, um, and what's, what we're seeing in Canada, of course, is, uh, you know, with the truth and reconciliation uh, movement pushing ahead, every meeting and every conference that you go to nowadays uh, is started by a representative of a native band uh, upon whose uh, unceded lands uh, mm. the conference is taking place. And um, it is my practice not to stand because uh, they want to, you know, talk about their ancestors or beat a drum. It's just, I mean, it's just replacing one religious uh, observation with another, in my view, and I refuse to do either. So, okay, okay. So and I would be on. behind my kids. Uh, you know, certainly, I if my if one of my kids said that, mm -hmm. I would ask them why or what compelled them to not rise, and then listen to the explanation because that's the important part. Is if they just said, "Well, I," you know, you know, they were dissing somebody, right? That would be different than. Mm just making a stand about their own uh, right to expression and right not to express, right? Right to expression and right to exp It's like speech and choosing when to speak is still a right, whether there's yep. a religious or cultural obligation there or not, right? Yeah. Yep. I, and I can respect that. Sky, what's up? Um, the original pledge, as it was written by Francis Minister William Bellamy, did not contain the words under God. That was added in the 50s when yep. we were slapping God all over everything uh, because of the Cold War, the godless commies. Right. Um, that's was that 1954? They... I, I think that was a big year that money started yeah, getting. It was the Coin Act, I believe, 1956. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we put it in our money. Um, we added under God to the pledge. I have a little notebook somewhere that tells all the stuff we did during McCarthyism. Yeah, that was scary. Right. Um, can you imagine what it must have been like to be an atheist or a person of color in the fifties? Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Well, not I was as bad there. as it was I, in the forties. I'll tell you that, and not as bad as it was in the thirties. Yeah. I, it's, I can, I can give you some pretty clear indications. It, it sucks. Well, I was there, the time, but gets better. I hey. was there when it was happening, mm. and 
You know, I was in school when the under God came in and I was mm. refusing I was refusing to, to say the Pledge of Allegiance, and I was even refusing to stand up when everybody else was doing it. Good for you. And I got, Good for you. I caught some flack for that. I mean, it's it just the, I can imagine the, in the fifties. Yeah. The very end of the of the pledge negates the whole pledge right. with with liberty and justice for all. Well, liberty means I have the right to not recite the pledge. Right. And justice for all means I have the right to never be punished for not reciting that <laughs> pledge. <laughs> yes, really good points. Very good points, George. That's wonderful. Well said. Yeah. Yeah. So, and what would I do if my kid? Um, well, I would just yeah. back him up. You know, whatever he wanted it. to do was fine with me. Yeah. You, know? you know, I and I don't have a kid, but even if I had a kid who was like, "Hey, there was this weird," you know. Uh, observance that was going on or this you know culturally relevant thing and I don't see how it applies or I have some problems with it so like when everybody stood up to, to say their support I stayed sitting down because I'm not that I'm against it it's that I still have questions about it and I'm going to want to do my personal research it's like you have the right to do that like you have a right to think about things before you just go with the crowd right and I feel like that societal pressure when there's an edict and you're in a classroom full of your peers and everyone's standing up the kid that's sitting down is probably the most, you know, aware and willing to think kid. That's something we should be fostering in schools, not so much punishing, um, in my opinion. Though, you know, that is just my thought. If we had an atheist pope, maybe we can get some more support for that. <laughs> That'd be what I'd look for in my stump speech. Uh, mm. We'll do this as uh, our last calling part before we go out. Um, so on the, on the topic of an atheist pope, Top three things we want, top three things we don't want. And we, maybe we can get there by consensus. And I'll have, uh, I'll, I'll throw out my top three and then we'll feel free to three and the three things I don't want. So obviously the things that I don't want are fancy hats because I don't want atheists to wear fancy hats. I know, wear fancy hats if you want on your own, but don't make it a man. I'm not going to be an atheist then. I'm sticking with Pastor Farron. <laughs> you can be an atheist with a fancy hat, but don't think yeah. atheism. We need well, they're not mutually fancy hats. exclusive. Yeah, 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 exactly. They're not mutually exclusive. Not everyone get a hat that cool, right? And not every atheist has a head, right? Oh, what's up? What's up, Sky? Oh, well, actually, uh, in surveying world religions, I have found that, that weird headgear and robes yes are very important yes yeah because you have to look the part right it's just costuming yeah. it's part of the fantasy it's like why you know handcuffs are so important for fetishes what else can you do about it yeah. anyway <laughs> second one let me eat my bacon me... <laughs> <laughs> enough Bacon's said good. like we know how to cook it safely like come on what are you doing and i would say the third one is good reps so like if everybody in Congress and in the leadership all look the same, there's a problem. Make sure that you have as much of a multifaceted approach in, 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 in your advertising as you do your leadership, because it's that idea of compromise. It's that idea of empathy. It's, it's you get it by living that experience. And if your leadership is informed <clears throat> by that, that could be a great thing. And so, yeah, I'd like to see a variation. I'd love to see diversity. I'd love to be able to eat my bacon and no headgear. And that would be my three things, my recs that I would give to our, our upcoming rising of the nun uh, Pope representation system for atheism as a whole. Dread Pirate, what do you think? Well, like I said, I, I'm much more into pacifarianism and uh -huh. sort of the, uh, the rule of uh, the pirates consensus. And uh, that's, that's what I would like to see in either the nuns, the atheists or the pastafarians. Nice, nice. Well, and potlucks, though. It seems like you need to have a lot of potlucks to, to keep everybody. Oh, yeah. 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 Nice. Well, that's nice. great. I mean, food is good. Very, very cool. Very cool. There, hear me out. Here's a weird thing. I, sorry for this weird tangent. But is there a space Pastafarian sect of Pastafarians? So it's like, yes, ships are cool, but spaceships even cooler. <laughs> We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, That's I'm gonna I'm gonna put it up to Elon Musk to 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 name the, the first uh, spaceship to Mars the Bounty. Yeah, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> uh, Eric Boudreau, what would be your final top three tips for uh, our Pope atheist system? Well, I think I came up with two two of each uh, okay. uh, while listening. Um, inclusion, I think, kind of slightly touches what you were saying too. But yeah, I mean, any anyone could could be a part of it. You don't have to. You'd probably 
shouldn't even have to be an atheist, you know? Ooh, you, interesting. You know, bring, bring in any, welcome anyone. Yeah, and different different people. Um, I, and I'd say holidays. Let's get some holidays. Let's get some yeah, holidays. I mean, I, love yeah. it. I want a day off. I mean, come on. <clears throat> uh, you know, Easter is just, it's the most boring holiday. I have, my kids are old enough now where we don't bother with a, look, a hunting for eggs. And otherwise, there's nothing to it. So let's get yes. a good atheist holiday. And good. then, And then I guess the two things we wouldn't want i wouldn't want uh nothing that you know compel you to do things the the standing up the you know if we had any kind of you know activity uh, you know you, you you do it if you want to there's no there's no pressure um mm. uh and then i had another another good one but it, it escaped me so can anyway. you imagine can you imagine in the summer or the early spring leaving a hard-boiled egg on the dirt behind some grass and then having <laughs> kids run out with their dirty hands searching through yep. dirt finding an egg and then the expectation is you're going to eat that egg and it's like why is this a holiday we should get rid of this and it's like yeah. and let's it, eat some good easter candy and it's peeps and that's yes. all you got no no get rid of this <laughs> holiday just get rid of it there's nothing good about this what's up what's up Jeff? Uh, i was just going to say that uh, up in uh, british columbia here we have what is now uh, called family day okay um and so that's a secular celebration here, here's my, here's my, here's my replacement tip. I would say, call it tie dye shirt day where everybody just goes out and tie dye shirts mm -hmm. and it can, you can roll into family day and it's still the Easter vibe, but like tying, dyeing a shirt is always a fun activity. Yeah. It's always fun. And then you get clothes afterwards. It's super cool. Yeah. It's just like, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're, we're shooting for Passover. Nice. <laughs> we cool. have talked like a pirate day. We do. Yes. Yes. That's uh guy. Um, Oh, sorry, my, yeah. bad. my bad. October 15th. Oh, wanna... uh, just wanted to remind you that Easter has chocolate. Every holiday and has it's chocolate. It's out of bunnies. Yes. And know, Valentine's Day, you know just why... after Valentine's Day, what are you doing? Come on. Do you know why Easter bunny chocolates are hollow? No. It's to represent God's promises. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well played. <laughs> very good. Very good. George uh, Brown, uh, anything you would recommend as if, as the atheist could do better in, in terms of writing? well, I, I really I can't because I'm passing a brain stone right now. <laughs> yeah. I know you've been talking about better advertisement. How do we get the message out to non-believer? Or oh, how do we yeah, how do we get respect from these people? I, I don't have an idea for that right now. Sure, sure, but, sure. But maybe the Pope will. Maybe the atheist Pope will. Maybe the Pope will, yeah. And can set it up for us. Larry, what's up? <clears throat> well, I, I, I have three things, I think. Uh, cool. First, no authoritarianism. They strictly represent uh, themselves and atheism, and they don't pass decrees, as it were, that, that are um, forced on anybody else. Uh, now there was a person who said, I remember who it was, is that we can't, we shouldn't have mean atheists. Ah. But but the thing about it is, uh, as Daniel Dennett said, there's no simply no way to, no polite way to tell people they're dedicated their lives to an illusion. Right. Mm. They're they're <laughs> they're going to consider you mean yeah. if you question their beliefs. Period. Right. So we shouldn't right. worry right. about that. Right. And as far as Easter goes, okay, forget the eggs. Uh, I think we should throw Lego pieces out in the yard have all the kids find them and then after they find them they all come back combine them and then build something how's that that's okay good. yeah okay it's a, it it sounds so good on paper until you step on uh, a lego piece of your yard in the middle yeah. of september and you're like yeah. why did we come up with this holiday? what are you doing in the yard in the middle or, of september or you, or you find it saying, you can't find all the pieces you can't find or you yeah, find it your idea. dog's poop a couple days later <laughs> <laughs> yeah your dog can poop in the yard but you can't leave lego you put now you listen, put the what legos are you doing today? looking through your dog's poop i have i have a brilliant idea to add on to list you make the lego pieces out of sugar so it's still candy and you can yeah. still brick them together yeah, and that way it dissolves outside. Anyway, very we're close to ending. We need to go ahead and get final words. Dread pirate. I'm going to go around and ask everyone what they'd recommend to see next week, and then where can we find their stuff? Dread pirate. Where can we All find right. their stuff? And what would you recommend we check out before next? Well, uh, my stuff is I live stream this at uh, 7 a.m. on Sunday mornings at uh, 7 a.m. PDT Pacific Daylight Time. And my channel is Mind Pirate. M I N D P Y R A T E. Uh, check it out if you like it subscribe 
And I am reading this book. Ooh, Breaking the Spell. Is, yeah, Daniel, Daniel Bennett. Bennett's Breaking the Spell. Great, great read. Mm -hmm. He's a, a, a master a writer and he really knows his stuff. Um, so I'd recommend that. Nice. Boudreaux, what do you recommend that we check out next week? And if you're still making stuff, where can we find it? Man, I'm not making any, any stuff. My, my dear friend, Chad White, hasn't talked to me since December 4th. Um, mm. Yeah, it just it really, really, really hurt me. I, I, don't, I don't get it. I got no closure. So I'm sad about that. But um, I, I did post in the, in the chat pod a link. Um, come to Kentucky in September uh, for the Free Thought Convention. You guys can all drive up, or some of you can. Sorry, Dred. <laughs> um, and we have uh, uh, Monica Burns, who's the um, chapter organizer of Black Nonbelievers in Louisville, um, and a bunch of other people. So check it yeah. out. So I'll tell yeah. you this straight out. I may not go to the, I'm probably, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to the Free Thought Convention, but I will head up to Kentucky sometime this year. And I'll probably time it at the time when both of us can go out and play some disc golf together. If you have disc time golf, to go, yeah. hell yeah. Yeah, love yeah. To. Hell yeah. And hell yeah. Or, or volleyball. Come I'm down volleyball. with both. I'm down with both. Yeah. If you just want to hang out, I'm totally cool with that. I'm totally cool. We actually that. won uh, our Marika's uh, championship uh, a couple weeks ago. Excellent. Very, very cool. Guys, uh, Sky, thank you so much for joining the show. It's always good to have you on. Go on ahead. Do you have something you'd like to add? Oh, yeah. Uh, I have a Facebook page called the Nullifidian Chronicles, and it's a kind of irreverent atheist approach to the Bible, to God, and to politics. Um, and then I also have a Facebook group that I'd like to encourage everyone to join called Humans for a Kinder World. Very nice. Um, oh. George Brown, second and a half. Do you have anything you'd recommend we check out? No, I don't. I don't today. Thank you. Okay, fair enough. Listen, I would recommend that you check out James Baldwin. Uh, he is a poet of the 1960s. What he's known for is being very critical of religion at a time when it was not only hard to do so as a white guy, but <laughs> particularly hard as a black guy. And he, uh, he used to be a Pentecostal uh, preacher, he has a quote here that I like really well. Um, it, it's in one of his plays. It says, if the concept of God has any validity or any use, it can only be to make us larger, freer, and more loving. And if God can't do this, then it's time we get rid of him. And to say that as a Black guy in the 1960s, that is, mm -hmm. that is some powerful justice going on right there. But James Baldwin, recommend you check out some of his poems. He's a really great playwright, too. Um, wrote some, some like the cornerstones of what I grew up with. But anyway uh you can find myself at let's chat you're probably on youtube right now feel free to leave a comment we'll go through it next episode and if you have any questions about atheism and you don't know what it's about well that's i'm sorry we can't answer it it's not like a book exists for that so anyway larry take us out sorry can't help you uh oh he's on mute he's on mute he's on mute he's basically going to say there is no <laughs> way we can help you but if you don't know what atheism is and all it's all about sorry right uh mnemonic content can be found online at digitalfreethought.com be sure to click the blog button for a radio show archives atheist songs and many articles on the subject my youtube channel can be found by searching for daughter five or larry rhodes and my book is atheism what's it all about it's available on amazon if you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind emotionally logically whatever you can get help at recoveringfromreligion.org. Uh, you can find this show on Apple iTunes, Pocket Cast, Amazon, and podcasts everywhere. Just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Thank you for joining us. Remember, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. And also remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Ramen. Great show, everybody.